and welcome back to Banter Jard. And today we're making this um, scrap um, sort of con flat type thing. Um, and we're going to make this from a resin. We're going to resin print the uh, the top part of that and the load um, and the bottom, um, the chassis and the wheels. We're going to borrow from a Hornby brake van. Uh, one just like this. I've got a few of these. These just tend to be the right size. The kind of the the um, the sort of ratio of length um, that I need. So uh, yeah, the tops will come off quite easily on these, and we can just pull them bits off. We don't need those. Although I do have another one, um, which is already stripped bare, and uh, someone's already done something to it. So we'll use that one instead. We'll save that for another project. So. Um, we're going to take the D couplings off. We don't um, want these on this one. This is just going to be in siding. So it's going to have uh, three chain link couplings. Just to get rid of some of this rubbish on here and glue in all sorts of things, whatever the previous owner has left on there. And then we'll use our Dremel to get rid of our D couplings. Now you can do this with a knife. This is quite soft. Um, it's just easy with the Dremel. Just be careful because. Uh, it's easy to get carried away and make a mess, as I have done before. And then that uh, that bit there where the where the coupling could would have attached to, we'll just get rid of that. And we'll trim it down a bit later on with a uh, a sharp knife just to tidy it up a little bit. We we'll get the bulk of it out of the way. So here's the uh, design for the con flat at the top of it. So. Um, I have to admit, I didn't design this myself. This is from uh, Thingiverse, just downloaded it. Uh, but it's been modified, so I've cut the uh, the, uh, the chassis off uh, because um, it's going to be easier for me to print this flat onto the uh, build plate like this. Now, uh, because I'm using a flexible build plate, I can print these flat and, uh, and they'll come off really easily. So I'm going to do three at a time. You can see the green area, that's where it's going to attach to the build plate. Uh, if you haven't used a resin printer before, the possibility some of this isn't making any sense. But anyway, this is what they look like when they come off. And this is on the flexible plate. And I'm wearing my gloves because uh, resin is uh, not particularly nice stuff, apparently. Uh, we just pop the, uh, the flexi plate, just um, sort of bend that, flex it, and then they will come off, honestly. There you go. And they just need a proper wash and then the curing. And then we'll be ready to go to the next part. Now the thing with these is they are quite fragile, these, these small uprights and the rails at the top. So we need to be very careful with this. And the other problem with um, some resin printed flat parts is that they do uh, tend to sort of banana up when they cure. So what we're going to do uh, to hopefully prevent that is that we're going to attach it to the uh, to the chassis um, now after it's uh, after we've cured it. If we leave it overnight, it could uh, sort of bend up a little bit more. So we're just going to attach it to this. So it's all been cured and dried, and we're just going to use this black super glue. So this is quite a slow um, sort of drying super glue. It gives me a chance to get this on straight because we're going to use clamps and so on. So there's our body. And you can see it's just buckled up just a little bit at the end there. So we use these uh, these small clamp, they just fit out to fit just exactly right. And we use one on each corner, and that'll just hold it straight until it dries, and then hopefully there'll be no issues further down the line. And that's it, we'll just give it a, a few minutes to set, and then we can carry on. Give me a chance to tidy up, maybe. Throw that away before I put my arm in it. And then once that's all set, we'll give it a coat with, uh, this is just normal um, car primer, uh, which is as good as anything. It's, just, it's actually just quicker than using uh, the airbrush. So we'll let that dry um, actually overnight and um, I've already broken it. 
because I'm a bit clumsy like that. But we'll just glue that back into place. It won't show once we've uh, we're, once we've finished. But these are very um, sort of brittle. And we're going to add in these three link um, couplings. These are from Cura Scale. And we can just um, check to see which hole we need. So we need the 1.2 drill bit, which uh, is that one there. And then we can use that to drill the little holes where they're going to go. Now, if you look at the um, the conflat above, there is a mark on there because normally that's where the uh, the buffers and the the coupling would go. But we um, you're doing this slightly differently, so the coupling needs to go somewhere down the bottom. So we're just going to drill the hole there. Now you can use a um, a normal sort of drill. Don't need the Dremel for this. But, um, yeah, I'm just lazy. And then we're going to super glue them into place using our black super glue. And again, it's a quite a slow drying one, unfortunately. Um, I've run out of the other one. So uh, I need to hold it in place just for a, a minute or so till it sets. And I'm putting these on now because I want these to get um, sort of matching weathering rust with the rest of the um, wagon. So we're going to start with. Uh, a rust, a dark rust. Um, from this one from Panzer Aces, uh, actually called Dark Rust, ironically. So I thought it was a good place to start. Um, Panzer Aces need to mix down with thinners, so 50 50 with, um, uh, with airbrush thinners. Give it a little stirry poos. And uh, like they say, consistency of like milk. So just normally 50 50 is normally gets you there. And then we're going to give that a good old gross. Um, don't need to do it too precise if we miss any bits. It doesn't really matter because this is just kind of one of our base coats. There's going to be a few other colours are going over the top of this and uh, powders and lots of other stuff. So um, I'm not going to take too much time or too much care with this. Um, you may feel differently with your own models. I'm not sure, um, but this is just uh, this is just me. So it looks quite light there, it's actually not as light as that. It's quite a dark chocolatey brown, which is our dark um, sort of rust based coat. Now with a sort of model like this, there's lots of bits where you can just so easily miss them. So um, just need to spin it around to every sort of side that you can see, and then check for the bits that you can't see. Such as the bits underneath, so if you turn it on its side, it looks like it's not been painted at all. So there's lots and lots of bits that have been uh, missed out. So we'll catch as much as we can. Like I say, I'm not going to take um, too much sort of time or trouble to make sure we get everything because there's lots of other colours to, uh, to, to use. Because you need to bear in mind that rust is never one shade of whatever colour it is, um, whatever shade of brown or orange or um well even yellow and purple so whatever color you uh, uh use you need to use some sort of complementary colors as well so different tones of rust so in this particular case we've just added some orange in and we'll uh we'll make um a lighter shade of rust and i'm applying this in places where i think that um, the wagon would have rusted in the real world so around any um, joins um, any bare edges or anything where bolts may have gone or rivets um, they're the typical places that things would start to rust or if you've got some damage or if it's um, like on the load bed there if it's going to have a uh, steel load inside for instance the paint would have chipped off and um, the rust would have then been able to start really uh, easily so uh, that's what we're concentrating on. So just a little bit more. Just some um, sort of um, softer patches of this uh, of the rust. Now we're going to um, do a bit of paint chipping later on. So generally speaking, you. I tend to use a lighter shade of um, rust underneath that as a base coat anyway, so uh, they're probably a bit brighter than you would um, imagine. 
So we're getting for a dark colour now. This is black and brown mixed together. Um, just to add some uh, some contrast. It looks a bit weird there. But um, like I say, once it's dried and all the other colours are on, it's going to hopefully look okay. This just adds a bit of shadow as well. And then this is just the pure um, orange rust, so the brighter one of the lot. So these are our sort of highlights. Um, because we're gonna do a paint chip effect over the top of this and use powders, this color will sort of dull down a little bit. So it won't be quite as bright as it may, may look on the screen at the moment. But again, just work on the places where um, you know you think the rust would have started from, and then we are using um, just normal hairspray. As you can see from Asda's, that tin's lasted me about six years, I think, so far. So we're going to give this a nice liberal coat of um, hairspray. Now, the reason for using hairspray is it acts like a release layer, so. Um, because it's um, sort of water soluble once you've paid out painted our color on the top and we're going to use a bit of blue here um, if we use plain water the water will go through the uh, the top color the blue here um, and then it reacts with the lacquer underneath the hairspray underneath and that just dissolves or, or gives up its adhesion and then the paint just chips off so we're using blue just to add a bit of interest really. Um, not doing the whole thing because uh, um, I just want sort of hints of blue here and there. So I'm just doing the places where I think um, I'd like it to show through. And then we can chip back afterwards and uh, make it look a, a bit more worn. So once that's, um, well, not even dry, just leave that sort of five or 10 minutes um, using plain water on a, on a brush. And you can see is pretty much as soon as you touch it, it starts to come off. So we don't want to go too, uh, uh, too aggressive with this. We don't want to take all the blue paint off. We need to leave some of it on, but you can sort of uh, move it around until you think it's looking about right. So the idea is that the center of the bed, all the paints come off there. It's gonna dab it back with the cloth and that stops the water from, because um, it dries it, it's the water's not gonna to continue to lift the paint. So something like that, maybe a little bit more. Quite happy with the, uh, with the inside. It's got that kind of nice worn patina now. Not that we're gonna see any of it at all once the load's in anyway, but that's not the point. And then on the uh, on the outside, you can see just really lightly brushing it down, and it leaves the paints in the nooks and the uh, nooks and the crannies, and uh, the crevices, and uh, just sort of chips around the edge, and that's the kind of effect we're looking for. And we just need to continue all around the, uh, the wagon until that's done, till you're happy. This particular wagon looks just as well without, um, without the blue paint on as well. I've done it in just pure rust and it looks quite nice, I think. So uh, it's a matter of preference, I guess. Depends on what um, sort of liveries you're running and what environment you're in, I guess. Um, whether they use a colour or, or not at all. So 
just making sure we get some of the insides as well the insides of those corner pieces we put lots of blue on those so we just want to chip some of that off do for now and then we'll just give out coats of um, coat of varnish from the airbrush this just seals everything in and uh, gets us ready for our next stage So we need to add our rust and we're going to use our rust powders so this is the Vallejo set that we've used um, on all the other models so far and there's three or four different shades of rust in the set um, so we've got dark rust and then two brighter ones and then there's also yellow which um, we start out to yellow it's ochre I think but we'll uh, we'll use that as well as a kind of highlight here and there I'm really concentrating on the joins and the uh, sort of ends of these rails and these uprights because that's where um, a rust would typically start. So on the corners there, anything where um, where it's going to get knocked by um, you know the load going in or the, um, the forklift or whatever the case may be. Uh, the paint chips off and that's when the water gets in and it starts to rust so that's kind of what we're trying to to emulate and although you can't see the colors I'm using from the palette we are using to sort of alternate in the, the, the shades uh, just to mix them up because I say tone the, the tones of um, the rust isn't not just one shade there's, there's lots of different tones going on so just make sure you uh, use more than one um, one of your powders your rust powders to get the uh, the effect um, as natural as you can You can see the um, the bed is still sort of slightly wet, and one of the reasons for doing that um, is that so that um, the, the powders can build up a texture uh, on its layer as well, and uh, it gives the um, the powder something to bond to more. Uh, I find that if you um, if you put them on when the varnish is wet, when you add the next layer of varnish to seal it in, the colours stay a bit more vivid. Um, doesn't sort of wash away as, as much and then you can manipulate them with a smaller brush and let's say create textures you can still mix the powders in as well just need to be careful that your uh, your brush doesn't get saturated in um, in the varnish otherwise uh, you'll start to get harsher edges and the feathering will sort of go away so, uh, so just be uh, beware of that maybe have a couple of brushes to hand so if one starts to get too wet and sticky then uh, then you can use a different brush now these brushes I've got four or five brushes they're only ever used for um, powders they're never used for anything different so they they never really get too um, too wet they're, they're still quite nice and soft um, just starting to wear nicely now Just trying to dab it in uh, fairly randomly, changing the uh, the powders from time to time, just to get a nice sort of blend of um, of the rust tones. Just to end up look very. Uh, we don't want to look in uniform or any sort of pattern that, um, appearing on there. So 
so a little bit on the um, on the axle box as well a little bit of rust on there I've also got um, the Humbrol uh, dark earth weathering powder in the palette as well we're not using that just for the moment we're going to save that for uh, a little job a bit later down the line so uh, primarily these are just the rust colors that we use in there and that um, yellow that's it just going on there just um, to kind of adds a little highlight and when you use your lacquer that will um, it will fade uh, in quite well uh, it looks a bit odd there but um, it does look a bit better once it's uh, once it's lacquered in which we'll do now we'll just sort of lacquer all that I guess it all sealed up and um, and it means that when we it's not going to go when we touch it we're not going to move it around or disturb it with our fingers so um, we can use these three colors here to do those running boards along the uh, the bottom of the chassis which is wood now wood um, when it when it weathers it turns kind of grey so uh, it always looks a bit weird painting wood in grey but um, that's what we're gonna do so the next time I think I'll use a nicer brush as well that one has pretty much uh, had it that needs a bit of a service I think but anyway we'll persevere we're just adding this um, sort of light um, grey tone I'm not taking much care at all. A lot of this is going to be hidden again. We just want to get an idea of the colour that's there. Um, there'll be uh, a few other layers over the top of this anyway. So we're doing that on both sides. You can also do underneath. Um, I'm not going to bother with, uh, with the underneath on this particular one. But make sure you catch around the edges as well. So we're just cutting in um, around that the, the metal work. So we just want, want the wood uh, to be in that grey. Uh, color at the moment So I'm sure you'll do a, a, a better job on yours than, uh, than I seem to have done them on this one. So once we've got the first colour down, we're going to use the dark grey next. You can use black if you want to, mix it in with the light grey. It's really just to add in um, some sort of line, some sort of grain um, of, the, uh, of the wood plank that's there. It's not too... Uh, and we've got to be too precise with this as I, we're going to cover a lot of this in a minute anyway but it's just to get the feel of it just the, the idea that it might be actually wood rather than a piece of black plastic so I'm just blending this in with the grey so I've got the, uh, the light grey on the brush um, just a little tiny bit just to really blend it in and then we're using the white that gives us a highlight just uh, random patterns don't need to be too precise and then again we'll blend that in with the uh, with the light grey just so there's no harsh lines once that's all dry we can get our 
uh, dark earth weathering powder from Humbrol, and we're just going to give it a little uh, a little dose of that, not too heavy, um, but it will obscure most of that um, sort of the brightness of that grey. We'll get that gone. We don't want that showing, but the grey still shows through, so you can still see that. Hopefully, it used to be that it is wood um, or aged wood, and then around these parts where um, the, the still either joins or goes through, there might be rust um, sort of seeping into the paint. So we'll just put a bit of powder on there just to um, replicate that, and then blend it in with the dark hearth from Humbrol again. Sure, you get the edges, those uh, leading edges and the trailing edges of those planks as well. And then we've got this, um, this is called chrome oxide, so it's like obviously green, um, but it replicates sort of algae and uh, any moss that might grow on your, on your wooden surfaces. Just be careful, it's very, very bright. Um, you could mix it in with your dark earth it may be uh, um, a better idea to do that but this would uh, this is fine it worked out okay I'm just putting the dark earth over the top now just to blend it in a little bit and then uh, another coat of uh, lacquer now you may have noticed there that one of the uh, one of the couplings has uh, fallen off that one there, just at that end, it's about to come around. Um, it fell into the carpet, but I managed to find it. I can't believe that, um, that I actually found it, because it was the last one I had as well. So the um, the buffers, never really sure how to uh, approach buffers. I, I try them every time I uh, do a model, maybe slightly differently, but I'm kind of settling on this way at the moment so uh, it just gets all the different color paints uh, that I've thrown at it and then we'll dry brush it uh, with silver and it just picks up the edges um, and just gives it a little bit of a silver kind of color not really going to go too uh, too heavy on that And then we go going to add in just a few accessories. So there's some bits of old chain we've had knocking around. Right, you can paint these before you put them on if you're going to use something like this. Um, these are a little bit bright. That one's not too bad. But we're just going to hang these kind of randomly um, along the edge as if they've been used at some point and then someone can't be bothered to uh, tidy them away properly. They just left them hanging on the rail. And we'll do a few here and there and try to make it look a bit random. Random's a really difficult thing to achieve, I think. Um, the more you try, the worse it gets, uh, the, the less random it looks. Let me just hang that there till it dries and we'll sort that bit out in a minute. Maybe a bit over the back on the other side. Or you could add um, maybe rope got some uh, some something that would simulate rope you could have tied that around uh, one of the handrails or even take one of the handrails out and put rope in between I don't know so uh, the lots of options so once that's that's dry already we'll just continue to uh, to drape that chain glue the last bit into place we'll let that dry and that's done
So I've had this um, this environmental grime, streaking grime, I think it's called. Um, never really found much use for this. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure there are um, lots of uses for it. If you look on the website, it looks really good. Um, I'm probably not using it right anyway, but I just wanted a, a different colour, sort of a splodge of something on this. So I, it was on the side, so I thought to give this a go. But this is my favourite, which is um, my shafts and bearing grease. Uh, I'm just going to um, dab this on with this uh, with this flat brush, um, and then you just leave it to seep around, and it will sort of find its own way. It looks like a puddle to start with, but it will look like an oil stain once you let it dry. So uh, try not to manipulate it too much, unless you want to ferret it and have it really smooth. So I sometimes do that for like the runs on oil tankers. Um, but on this one, I'm just gonna drop it and then just leave it. Um, so if this is add, for instance, the, you know, the engine box in, there'll be lots of oil will come out of those and they'll go all over the place. Um, so that's what we're, uh, we're looking to achieve. It just looks like an oily, like a wet mess at the minute. But it does dry nicely. And it will dry with a with a slight sort of oily sheen. So uh it does uh, it's quite effective. It's worth um it's worth investing in a in a tub of that. It will last for a long time unless you knock it over like I done on, on a couple of occasions but it should last literally for years and years so anyway you think oil and grease may be attracted or may uh, may appear so on the on the springs and the axle boxes where the grease would uh, normally come out once the seal goes Grease. Now you can weather your chains before you put it on. Um, I I didn't obviously, so one piece is already weathered for whatever reason that may be. But we'll just use a fine brush and add some uh, different colour tones of rust on there. So we used the bright orange to start with. And then we've got the dark rust in there as well, the dark brown, and just mix them about. Or you can use uh, lacquer, then powder over it, whatever, um, whatever you feel is best. It's probably best to just to weather it before you put it on. So I don't just put this in a, a big lump on the uh, on the painting turntable there, and just spray it in, in lots of different um, shades of brown. And then once it's dry, you can then use it. So that's pretty much that. It doesn't need to be too uh, too uh, precise. We're not going to cover all of it, just to give an idea that it's not um, sort of brand new chain that it's got some sort of age to it. Hopefully. So uh, we need to sort out this cargo. So these are 
um, engine blocks. These are V6 uh, F Ford engine blocks, if it's uh, any relevance. Uh, again, these are from Thingiverse. I've just uh, rescaled them to make three or four different sizes. And then I uh, printed those on the uh, the Eligo Saturn printer. And then just to make it easier to paint, because there's like 14 of them, I think there are. We're just going to stick them with double sided tape onto this piece of card. And then we can uh, we can paint them all in one go, or all in the same place at least. Now because these are only going to be shown one way, I'm not going to paint the bottom. So that I'm quite happy with these being stuck on this card for the duration. Um, if you want to have yours in different orientations, then you'd need to maybe um, put them on a cocktail stick and so you can got access all around and you can paint every surface um, properly, unlike me. So we use our car primer again. This is uh, one from the range. So this is like one of the cheaper ones, but it seems to cover really well. And uh, it's not particularly thick, which is nice. It's, you can still see all your detail. So we're using the same colors as we've used already. So we'll, we'll start with uh, the dark rust, the, uh, the Panzer Aces one. Um, and uh, we're not gonna do all of them. We're going to try and mix it up a little bit and have uh, slightly different uh, colours because some of the blocks, will, for whatever reason, they'll be different colours of uh, of rust. So we'll do a few, and then we'll uh, change the colour. We're using this uh, orange now, orange rust. And then we can use the orange as the, uh, as the highlight rust on uh, on some of the darker blocks. Now all those these are uh, these these are particular V6s from our, our car engines. The scale we printed them in, they would be for lorries and big tractors uh, sort of units. So they're um, they're not car scale they would be tiny if they were car scale I'm gonna couple in um, primarily in black or, or dark it's actually brown and black mixed together just to make a dirty color maybe some of the black on a few of those uh, to simulate um, maybe where there was fire or sort of uh, carbon residue that sort of thing that's the idea And then a bit more rust on the black ones as well. Now if you can hear a growling noise behind me, that's my dog. He's having a moment. Um, so having a bit of a stretch. So I do apologize, I'm not being attacked by a Yeti. It is, in fact, my dog um, having a mad moment. So, uh, anyway, um, if you don't hear that, then you have no idea what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, so we're using our rust powders again. So the same rust tones as before. Uh, the yellow one's quite a nice one. It's like a watery, looks like a watery residue, which is quite nice. So uh, I've used that before quite a few times. And we just want to be fairly random, maybe have a couple that are similar because they would have, you know, been left in the same place and corroded in the same way or met the same untimely end, whatever the case may be. But they all need to have uh, various shades of rust on I'll put the link to these uh, these particular 3D prints in um, in Thingiverse uh, in in the description um, because they're worth um, they're worth having if you're into 3D printing. They're quite a nice accessory. They make uh, make quite an interesting load. 
So, um, and Eve, if, if you've got, you know, a garage on your layout um, or some sort of workshop, maintenance yard, some of these scattered around will be really good. So, um, yeah, the, the link is is uh, is down in the uh, in the description. You will need to rescan all these because I think they are maybe even life size in the uh, in the original drawings. So we're going to seal all that up using um, the Vallejo matte lacquer again. This just means that we can hand them, and we haven't got to worry about the paint, the the, uh, the paint and the powders coming off. And then we'll just take them off from the double-sided tape. You can see they're not painted underneath, but I'm not going to worry about that. Now some of these have misprinted ever so slightly for whatever reason, um, but it really doesn't matter because uh, because of the type of load it's designed to be. So uh, some of the uh, some of the misprints I've deliberately used on, on this and uh, and other scrap loads. Um, misprints are really good for scrap, um, whatever the misprint may be of. So uh, they seem to uh, to never throw any misprints away. Um, I've got a box full of them because I've been practicing quite a long time. Um, they uh, they do come in useful. So then it's uh, just a case of getting these all in um, in the in the load um, and trying to make it look random again, which is always so difficult making things look random. If you uh, just tip them in, obviously they won't work. Um, so we need to place them and make them look mm, kind of randomish. I, I suppose if it was uh, someone was loading this, would they load it randomly? I don't really know. Maybe not. They may have a scheme in place. I don't know. So we'll pop them into place and then we are pretty much done. So um, thanks for watching this one, a bit longer than usual um, and a little bit different with the resin uh, resin prints. If, um, if that's something you're interested in, seeing more, do let us know in the comments below and uh, I'll see what we can do, maybe a, um, a different type of uh, wagon next time or a different load or Whatever, do let me know what you uh, what you think, and we'll see you next time at Bunter's Yard. Have a good day.